we'll be talking about sunflower, our passive solar house. Sunflower, the seeded flower turns, heliotropic, sun worshiping, Fibonacci spiral. We named our house Sunflower, powered by panels that turn with the sun and by turbines whirled by solar heated wind. The whole earth is a sunflower. Mater and I met and then married through work in the Greens. I had been deeply involved in peace work in San Francisco and then in Michigan. As I thought about the changes needed in our world, homesteading made sense. Gardening and doing for yourself as much as possible out of the money economy. Maynard had a school of homesteading in Bangor, so our interests meshed. It was hard and often overwhelming work for me, coming from 20 years in the city to a farm in my 50s. So I was happy to plan a new home a little over 10 years ago that was off the grid on part of our old farm. The rest of the farm sold to young organic farmers. This was supposed to be a retirement home. <laughs> well, not quite. Really. We worked with a builder we trusted, uh, Tom Phillips of Portage. He'd been kind of disgusted with <coughs> building techniques, all that was thrown away, all of the trashy mansionettes that people were buying and the builders didn't tell them that some of the materials were just falling apart. So he was happy in December of 2000 to um, help us. He'd never done a, a solar, passive solar house before, but he was going to work with us. Um, we trusted his ability and were glad to see that he was enthusiastic about the prospect. It was not first for him and he did the research needed to build an energy conserving house. We worked with him also to design a floor plan and the type of house we wanted. So Maynard and Tom designed without an architect and it worked. By March of 2001, we had a building permit. We had made an estimate of our anticipated needs, which were about a fifth of what we had been using in our old house. The battery room on the east end of the house was constructed first, and the photovoltaic panels were set up just east of the house. We used some of the solar panel to build the house. We decided to build a softbox type of house, which is two stories high or south on, that, on the south side and one story on the north side. And it's also burned like the Wolver's house. And our bedroom is on that side. So in the winter, it's, it stays as warm as we want without any extra heat. And in the summer, it's cooler, so if it's really hot, we could just go into the bed. And there's a fan there, too. On the other side of the house, where we have south-facing windows, um, to get heat in the winter, we find that in the summer, it sometimes is a little too warm. We haven't put up um, the kind of curtains or shades that would help with that. We could do that. Maynard will tell you more about the technical aspects of building the house. There was no sacrifice of comfort or aesthetics in building their house. I want to emphasize that because I had seen photos of the solar houses from the 60s and 70s and all these tech guys <coughs> built the houses. <laughs> they were really ugly, I thought. But ours, Ours is not. Um, out the south facing windows, we have a beautiful view um, of our garden, one of our gardens, and um, a great uh, arbor, and then the fields 
to than the woods. So we can sit there and just enjoy the view in the networking. The zone work tracker and Siemens solar panels and two whisper wind turbines fit into the scene well with no jarring sense of inappropriateness. Inside the house, a masonry stove built by Doug Fry of Sturgis gives plenty of heat <coughs> during most of the winter, sometimes all winter, but if it's not enough, it's uh, supplemented by hydraulic hydronic heating uh, in the floor, under our concrete floor. Um, the stove also heats water, stored in two water heaters. Our large appliances are energy efficient, a French air washer, no dryer, we take advantage of the original solar heat the suns by hanging those out in the summer. In winter, we use a clothesline in the house. A sun frost refrigerator and two sun dancer Electrolux freezers complete the array. We freeze much of our summer produce and can the rest, storing it in a cold pantry. We have enough power for a radio, CD player, computer, even a toaster and other small appliances. Um, we don't feel that we've given anything up, really. It's, it's just a comfortable house. We do shut off lights and use energy efficient bulbs. An important reason for our decision to be off the grid was a desire not to support the Palisades nuclear plant. This, this was a key reason. We didn't save money at that time. We will, over quite a long period of time, uh, recognize the savings, except for the masonry stove. That, that's paid off quickly. We just don't like the nuclear power plant to our west on the shores of Lake Michigan. This plant is dangerously degraded and the fuel rods that are radioactive are stored on the shore of the sand dunes. Madness. After the horrendous accident at Fukushima in Japan, many more of us are aware of the danger next door. An accident would ruin this part of the state. The whole state it was a complete accident, making it a wasteland. We've already seen this in Chernobyl. 50,000 people were evacuated there and can never return. Here in southwest Michigan, we have precious farmland, some of the best in the country for fruits and vegetables. And this is also <coughs> an important tourist destination. Many of us have worked to shut down Palisades over the years. A new group formed after the Fukushima accident. We're sponsoring this event. It is called Michigan Safe Energy Future. We decided to call it Safe Energy Future because we wanted not just to shut down Palisades, but to talk about alternatives. And we tried to do that today. I'd like to close with a poem which was written after Fukushima. I think these things have to touch our hearts too before we change. A Walk with Toshio. Kushami becomes a household word along with foreign names. Saito, a village on the northeastern coast of Japan. Toshio, an old man who heard the siren, ran, climbed a hill, and looked back to watch the wave rise. Wreckage carpets the news. Toshio walks along a road on either side, nothing but rubble. Only him and the mid-stripe curving away to the sea. A narrow blue band, a few distant islands, 
like a view of islands across the harbor where I live. Where I live, seagulls sail above rooftops. Wings rose white in the morning sun. Around me, the soft hum of conversation, white porcelain cups and, t and dishes. And I wonder about who's tumbled in the wave, who's left standing on shore. Days later, radiation crackles at the broken power plant. Officials chant hymns to safety. But far as Tokyo, it bristles like wildfire. If we could see it, we'd escape, a worker says. And now, radiation snakes into the water, rice straw for cattle, the milk on kitchen tables rattles. Toshio, did government, did the experts say not to worry? Did they promise jobs, health insurance, and sell nuclear power? Here, too, they preach and say, Alan Senator says your disaster calls us to keep building atomic plants. Your disaster. Toshio, are you still looking back? And those black and silver seekers, do they still circle above your lost village? Where I live, mounds of snow along sidewalks are melting. The sun is warm, dark patches of snow melt, model roads. Soon, blue chicory, Queen Anne's lace will tremble as the giant diesels run past. You walk in my dreams. I'm an old man too, looking back. Sorry about the meltdown at Fukushima. Like Three Mile Island, like Chernobyl. So sorry, all anyone says after counting costs, cancers, lost lives. All we say in English, in Russian, in Japanese. So sorry.
we, I mean, it's easy for people to kind of brag about how big their system is. I'm going to brag about how little our system is, because I think that's the name of the game. <laughs> um, we manage with, we manage our electricity needs with one kilowatt of photovoltaic panels. That's 1,000 watts. And uh, two little wind turbines when the wind blows, which is much more frequent than it used to be. Uh, each of them is rated at one kilowatt. But of course, you can't really tell much about that because it depends on how, how fast the wind is. So basically, with two, two kilowatts, we're managing to get all the electricity we need. We do this with very efficient appliances. Where we listed the names of some of those. And we do this by having a house that uh, is efficient in terms of its construction as well, because they both build as a new house. Um, there is an inverter, of course, to change the, the it's a 24 volt system. But the inverter changes some of that into 120 volts uh, so that we can uh, use it for lights. And that's very convenient. But if I were doing it again, and this is my little word of advice to people who are going to go with renewable energy, I would make sure that there were more uses for 24 volt systems because I think the appliances, um, 24 volt systems, are better than they used to be. And you don't have to run it through an inverter, which takes 16 watts all the time it's buzzing along. And that adds up very, very fast. Um, on heating, our house is also very, very simple. It has three sources of heat, passive solar from the windows on the south side, the masonry stove, which we love best of all, because it's the one thing we deal with once a day, in cold weather we fire it and um, then in warmer weather it lasts for another day easily so maybe sometimes only every other day and, and that's a small thing it's a half hour chore uh, so it's compa compared to most wood stoves where you have to fire them all the time this is easy and very nice radiant heat the bricks stay warm to the touch for 24 or 48 hours and so it's not enough to burn anybody but it's very convenient so anyway, the masonry stove and the third, as Barbara mentioned, were the hydraulic tubes buried in the concrete floor. And this winter, because it was so cold, we were glad we had them. Mm -hmm. And of course, the water that circulates through them is already also heated by the masonry stove, which has a loop in it, and it stays hot in there 24 hours a day inside the firebox. So it's thermal siphons to a tank upstairs, and all this provides with hot water in, uh, in winter. In summer, there's a panel on the south side of the house, which the sun eats, and so there's hot water from either the messenger stove or from the sun all the time. Um, that's about all I think I need to say. Um, I will mention one other thing. Another application of solar power is photosynthesis, and it's just really useful when you want to raise food. <laughs> 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 